somebody to say, yes, I can. Yes, I, can. I, I do not believe a single person in this room. Let's try it again. Everybody say, yes, I can. Yes, I can. A little louder, please. Yes, I can. Come on, I want to wake everybody up in the three other rooms. Let's do that. Ready? Say it. Yes, yes I, can. I can. Martial arts is my love. Believe it or not, I don't do it for money. I do what I love, and the money comes. So everything I talk to you about is really just 43 years of life experience, and what I'm gonna share with you is for you. Create a positive attitude. What we're talking about here is creating the type of mindset where you make the environment where your school is the only place people wanna to come to and the last place they wanna leave. So everybody show me your big smile. Let me see those smiles. Number one reason to smile, if you smile, you will feel happy. You will feel better. Big smile again. And you gotta give me the four-year-old version on this one. If you smile, you will make more friends. Say it again. Okay, if you smile, you will make more friends. And if you smile, the hard things will be Ah. And it's that type of positive mindset that makes people want to come to your place. It's the only place they want to come to. It's the last place they want to leave. So how do you establish that? How do you establish that? Are there those days you come into the school where you absolutely don't want to be there? Raise your hand. Honesty is the best policy. You know, one day I had three instructors out. I taught nine and a half hours straight. Nine and a half hours straight. My first class was at nine. 30, I didn't walk out that school until 9.30 at night. Nine and a half hours straight on time. So how did I gear up for that? Well, much like the heroin waiting, does anybody wear Under Armour under their uniform? I do, so I can, and my wife will laugh at this. I put on my Under Armour, and I have a full length mirror in my office now, this is a bad visual. Under Armour in my supporter, getting ready for, and I stand there and I go, I am the bad man. <laughs> I do, is it true? I do. That's my wife, Kim, over there, by the way. Yeah. And I do. I stand in that mirror and I go, I am the Batman. And then as I put on each layer, I think about being five in the martial arts. I think about six. I think about losing 17 tournaments before I won my first two. And I went on to win 150 championships. I think about that never give up, give all you got attitude. And that's what I do when I put on that uniform. And I remind my staff of the same thing. So once I singe that belt up and I walk out onto that mat, I'm no longer just, you know, Brandon Belisa with the 20 month old son. You know, I'm changing a poop diaper now or, you know, taking out the garbage. I'm now Professor Brandon Belisa. Because know that you are the example that your staff, your students, your parents, everybody follows. Can I get a yes, sir? Yes, sir. So that part is real, real important. And a great saying that I heard, and you've probably heard this before, attitude is contagious. Who has caught yours today? Who has caught yours today? And if you exude that positive attitude, you attract positivity into your life. And it really is, someday I say, fake it till you make it. I'll stare in that mirror, and as Master Kovar taught me, feeling good and getting better. And I'll look in that mirror, grimacing, going, Master Kovar saying to me, okay, feeling good and getting better, hey, Master Kovar, I just get my, Big slug. And I'm staring at that mirror and I go, feeling good and getting better, feeling good and getting better, feeling good and getting better. That power of suggestion that you need, because one bad day, how many students is you could potentially lose? How many? All. How many? All. All. And just know that, because every day, your student is one, close, one day closer to being a black belt, or one day closer to leaving. And when you're putting on that uniform and you've had that bad day, check it. Check it. And some days, do I act? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I put that smile on my face and next you know, you teach one or two classes, hey, I feel better. See, when you establish a mindset, and this is a classic example, you ever wake up in a bad mood? You can't help that. But you know what? It is your choice. It is your choice to stay in that place all day long. Do you agree or disagree? Agree. You agree. So that mindset is a new place. And why do I say this? And I'm speaking about this first and foremost. Every dream, every thought, everything you create begins where? Right? You didn't wake up a black belt. You woke up one day in your mind and said, hey, I want to study martial arts. Every thought, every dream begins where? 
in your mind. So if you create that mindset and you visualize that, you can make that happen. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. So be very mindful of that. Be a master of sustained passion. It's easy to be passionate for a day. Hard to be passionate for a week. Very challenging to be passionate day in, day out, week after week, month after month, year after year. I've had this school for 10 years, but I've done martial arts for 43. So year after year, that is the challenge. How many great schools have you seen come and go? Raise your hand, right? They're the hot thing on the scene, they're hot, they're on fire, and then they're gone. You see that? So your goal, if you're gonna build the type of quality life that you want, it doesn't happen in a day or a week. It happens over time, over time. So what are the two keys to sustain passion? Borrow from the martial arts principle. Number one is focus. Who can say focus, sir? Focus, sir. And focus means pay. Attention. And when you pay attention, you look with your arm, you listen with your arm, you think with your arm, and you do the right thing with your arm. Yes. Every second of every day of my life, I am looking, listening, thinking, and make sure my body's right. I'm teaching a class like this. What does that look like to the waiting area for my parents? I'm doing one of these. What's that gonna do? Yeah, my 17 year olds, right? Junior instructors, excuse me, sir. Is that good body focus right now? What? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Eyes, ears, mind, and body. So establishing focus in your life, and why is focus a vital life skill? Because focus keeps you on, on your path. You don't get deterred. And that's what happens. You ever find yourself on a great path, eating healthy, working out, everything's groovy, then, whoa, how'd I end up over here? What happened? Anybody with me on that? Come on, be honest. Honesty is the key to all this. Come on, raise your hand if you're with me on this. Everybody with me? There you go. There you go. So focus is number one. Fundamental martial arts principle we teach to preschoolers, we have to live day in and day out. So it's just about being mindful. Okay, am I paying attention? Right? It could be very crucial when I'm driving in traffic. It could be crucial when I'm leaving the house for getting the keys. It's crucial. It's just a wonderful life skill. The second one, discipline. Who could say discipline, sir? Discipline. And discipline means to always do your? Always. Not sometimes, not when it's convenient, not when you feel like it. Because in the years I competed, that minute I didn't feel like doing my best, I lost. I got hurt. The minute you don't do your best, you fail. And I don't believe in success and failure, so let's correct that terminology. There are people who learn, and there are people who don't learn. There are people that refuse to learn. Have you ever been that way? That's why I didn't open a school until I was 38. Anybody with me on that? Right? So be mindful of that. So when I talk about discipline, which means to always do your best, I'm asking you day in and day out when it's not convenient, when you don't feel well, when it's not to your liking, can you do your best? There are three challenge words that, that, that I actively talk about. A lot of people will use the word problem. Who uses the word problem? Anybody? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for the honesty. Replace that word with challenge. Because if you change the word problem to challenge, you now create a goal. And if you have a goal, are you inspired to achieve it? Yes, sir. But anytime my staff comes up to me and go, Professor, we got a problem. I just go, ah, no, we don't have a problem. Because when you say we have a problem, then you know the energy that it took to create the problem. You're now trying to use that same energy to solve the problem. And will you ever solve it that way? Yes, sir, no, sir. No, sir. So my feeling about that is you need to look at it as a challenge. Another one, should. Who uses the word should? Get rid of it. I should do this. I, I should eat healthy. I should revisit my curriculum. I should revisit, you know, remodeling the school. I, I should. But what you need to do is replace that with will. I will. I will eat better. I will train harder. I will. How many of you train every week? Awesome. You must want the talk. You must want the talk. I mean, I'm 48 and I think I look good for my age. You know how many people sign up because of that? Because you want the talk. That's super important. That's super important. And then the last one, and this is really important, you know, when you use the word try. Who uses the word try? Get rid of it. 
but I tried. Well, you know what that allows you to do? Rationalize your behavior when you're not successful. But I tried. You are rationalizing your behavior. Get rid of the word try and replace it with do. Every day, I kid you not, I wake up and I say, I'm always a student, never a master. Write that down, tattoo it on your forehead, put it on the mirror in your bathroom, you know, hang it in your locker in the school, forever a student, never a master. Because I think the challenge with being a master is you have nothing left to learn. I've mastered my craft. I've mastered my art. Well, you know what? No way. I love, love, love when my instructor comes to town. I get to stand in the front row and I go, yes, sir. He says, jump. I say, how high? He says, punch. I do a thousand. Because you know the pressure of being a school owner, right? It's wonderful. What a yin yang. What a great balance just to stand in that front row and go, any of you guys do Halloween parties at your school? Well, I'm the big dork in the Halloween costume leading the parade. It's the truth, that's my life. But in the same respect, I sit there and talk to that parent one-on-one -on -one and tell them, you are the parent. Do not forget that. Do you think your child wants to learn focus and discipline? Absolutely not. Leave them to their own devices, big bag of potato chips and Cartoon Network. And they respect that. It's even more of a contrast, isn't it? Wait, wait, you're that same dork that was in that clown outfit in the Halloween party. Now you're giving me this food for thought. You see the stark contrast? But you know what it shows? Your humility. And that's crucial. Because how many of you make mistakes every day? How many of you make mistakes in your business? Nobody in the back row makes mistakes in their business? Come on, raise your hand, please! Well, you know what? I love making mistakes. Because they're just lessons to be learned if I learn and grow and better myself and better my business and better my community. So make new mistakes every day. I encourage mistakes. It's part of the learning process. Just be mindful, going back to the same passion of focus and discipline, just be extremely mindful that you're not making that same mistake over and over again. And that's the scary part about being a master. I go from this as a beginner, open, my vision starts going like this and like this. And pretty soon I think I'm on this focused path when all actuality, I'm narrow-minded. You see the thin line? Very thin line to walk. And why do we get to that point? Because we feel, I'm not compromising my integrity. This is who I am and this is my art. Okay, I understand integrity. Do not mistake integrity for ego. Do not mistake integrity for ego. Create balance in your life. In Eastern philosophy, we believe we're made up of three elements. The mind, the body, and the spirit. Everybody say that? Mind, body, and the spirit. And if I feed all three equally, equally, I create balance in my life. And it's from that balanced point, will I make healthier choices? Yes, sir. Will I have better goals and choose better goals? Yes, sir. Will I manage my time better? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if I feed only the mind, but I neglect the body and the spirit, I'm unbalanced. I feed the spirit, but I neglect the mind and the body, I'm unbalanced. So you get my point. All three must be fed equally. Now, the body's obvious. We must exercise every day for how long? 60 minutes. Everybody do 60 minutes a day? Well, I'm too busy. I'm running the school. Ask my wife. I climb on my treadmill, my, my life cycle, 11 o'clock at night. Is that not true? She made me get headsets because the TV's so loud. I'm on the spike going like a little hamster on a wheel at 11 o'clock at night because I didn't get my 60 minutes. Kid you not. And I know my baby's going to be up at 7 a.m. just kicking me in the face going, wake up, Papa. But you know what? I need my 60 minutes. And that's where discipline will be a vital tool. And of course, eat healthy. I eat healthy six days a week. On Sunday, give me a burger, chips, whatever I choose. You know, Bill Phillips, Body for Life. Anybody ever read his book? Six days a week, brown rice, oatmeal in the morning, vegetables, fish, lean chicken. Very disciplined. Sunday? Yeah. Give me that. Tonight I'm going to eat a big fat burger. But you know what? What do we have for breakfast? Oatmeal, right? What did we have for lunch? Vegetables. That's what we had for lunch. But guess what I'm having for dinner? Anyone know a really good burger place around here? No? Fat burger. Okay, fat burger. Second, your mind. 
You must commit to learning every day. Who learns every day? Who reads every day? Let me go to that. Who reads something every day? Every day. Change that. Because you have the power to do that, don't you? It's all within your means. I'm not telling you anything you don't know that you have within you. It's there. So read every day. Third, and this is an element I'll touch briefly upon, your spirituality. You make that choice for yourself. Whatever that may be. To me, growing up, it was Bruce Lee, was the happy ending at the end of the movie, was a killer Patsy Cline, Billie Holiday song. Give me love, you know? And then uh, for me, I found God. That was my spiritual path. Some people, it's Buddhism, Muslim, whatever that may be. You know, find some spirituality, because on those days, I can't. For me, God can. And that's for me. So everybody, if I can encourage you, because it's not mind, body, and spirit, well, it's kind of gray, I think about it, you know? Maybe so. No, it's mind, body, and spirit being fed equally to create the type of balance in your life so you can function optimally. Practice an attitude of gratitude. Is your cup half full or is it half empty? Which one is it? Half full. Half full? I'm just happy to have a cup. You're happy to have a cup, okay? It's half full, I'm happy to have a cup. Any other takers? Anybody think their cup is half empty? Well, in the logical, scientific world, it's technically both. It's half full and it's half empty. Mindset. My mindset is, my cup runneth over. The present is called the present because it is a gift. And if I'm fully present in this moment with you, will I serve you better? Yes, sir. Will I instruct better? Yes, sir. Will the quality of my relationships and my life be better? Yes, sir? No, sir? Yes, sir. But if I've got one foot in yesterday, you know, well, back in 1972, I won this tournament, and nobody cares. I don't keep a single trophy in my school. Zero. My dad has all of them. So if I'm living in the past, or I'm projecting into the future, while I'm teaching this class, oh wow, I gotta pick up the milk for the wife, the baby needs diapers, how effective will I be teaching that class? So this is a little metaphysical, I know. What is the only reality? Right now, oh, I learned that when I took a foot upside the head when I was thinking about the next opponent I was gonna fight, because I was gonna escape by this guy, and he blasted me in the face because I was already in the next match. Oh, not a good choice, not a good choice. I'm very grateful for every breath I'm offered, every, everything. I've seen people pass away. I used to think you had to be old to pass away. That's not true. That's not true. We see babies born, you know, stillborn. We see people live to be 100. We see people die in a car wreck when they're 15. So, like, again, Master Cobra said to me, if the only reason you have to be grateful for is every day above ground is a good day. Right? We hear that in ProMat. Every day above ground is a good day. If that is the most base reason you can have to be grateful, be grateful. Because if you practice that attitude of gratitude, will you grow? Will you learn? Will you become better? Absolutely. Because it's that positive mindset again. So be content, but never satisfied. Recognize the importance of having goals. Everybody have a goal here? Okay, what was your goal here at the Super Show? To learn as much as possible. To learn as much as possible. To learn. To learn. Okay? That's a great one, to learn. Everybody else have goals? Who has goals in their life? Raise your hand. Raise, raise, raise. Important to have goals. Important to have goals. But in order to have goals, I say this to my staff and anybody I work with in business, you cannot delegate what you cannot define. You cannot delegate. How can you delegate to your junior instructor what they need to do curriculum-wise if you can't even define it clearly? In my school, everything's written out word for word from white belt to black belt. It's all on DVD, from white belt to black belt, on DVD. You cannot delegate what you can't define. Well, the same thing applies to your life. So we have basically three lists. A list, B list, C list. You've heard of that before, the ABC. A list has to happen today. Pick up the kids, brush your teeth, teach a class, eat healthy, work out, okay? B list, four to six weeks. Buddy day, oh, karate kid, promo parties coming up, belt testing. You should be promoting those events four to six weeks in advance, right? Planning your anniversary dinner. That's not coming up, is it? No time soon. It's January 27th. I know. I know when my anniversary is. 
Okay. And then the C list is your wish list. Dream, people, dream. When you first started out in the martial arts, did you ever dream that you would be a black belt? Did you ever dream that you would own a school? Yeah, dream. That's a powerful tool. Mm, what was it, 2005, I was making $36,000 a year. Last year, my tax income was 400,000. That's what I took home. You know, from growing up dirt poor, I lived in a foster home for four years. As a child, you know, food stamps well for the whole nine yards. I'm living the dream, and I'm so grateful. So that sea list is powerful. I went skydiving a year ago, jumped out of an airplane. Anyone ever do that, skydiving? Oh, what a rush. Everybody said, don't do that. You use your body for a living. That million dollar life insurance policy, out the door, buddy. You're jumping out of an airplane, you fool. But why did I have to do it? Other than that my wife allowed me to. Um, why did I have to do it? What? Why? It's my dream, it's my wish. And isn't that what we're doing? We're inspiring people to greatness to dream. We want our students to dream. And it's through that example of living. Boy, when I went skydiving, everybody looked at me like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, you got the coolions to get out there and do that. Well, so do you. So do you. And if you want to shake up your reality, your complacency, and I say this, write this one down. Complacency is the enemy. Never get too comfortable. Never get too comfortable. A little bit of edge is a good thing. Jumping out of an airplane, does that create an edge? <laughs> an amazing edge. So ABC lists, write them down. And whatever I don't finish on those lists at the end of the month, I move them over to the next month. I move them right over to the next month. And I keep going through those lists until everything's complete. Once those lists are complete, I write a new one. Because if you don't write it down, you can't visualize. You can't visualize what it is you're trying to achieve. And once you can visualize it, then you write the details. This is what it's gonna to take to make this bloody day successful. Okay, great, summer day camp. 12 weeks of summer day camp, which is what we do in our school. How do we make it successful? Successful. You know, and love challenges. When I talk about that ABC list, someone said, summertime is the worst time in the martial arts business. You ever heard that before? Right, it's one of my best times. Holidays, worst time of the year. It's one of my best times. I love challenges. Tell me what I can't do, right? Do any of you use the word I can't? Come on, be honest. Who says I can't sometimes? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, way in the back row. I appreciate that honesty. So when I say I can't, everybody take that out of your vocabulary. I want everybody to say, yes, I can. Yes, I can. I, I do not believe a single person in this room. <laughs> Let's try it again. Everybody say, yes, I can. Yes, I can. A little louder, please. Come on, I want to wake everybody up in the three other rooms. Let's do that. Ready? Say it. Yes, yes I, can. I can! You can. You can. You can. So take out I can from your vocabulary and put in yes, I can. Say it every day. Say it as much as you need to. Say it a million times a day. Properly manage your time, your money, and your wealth goals. Time is an important one. I work with so many school owners who go, you know what, I work all day, I do 12, 14 hour days, but I feel like I'm getting nothing done. Who's ever felt that way? <coughs> Remember those lists? Remember those lists? Follow those lists, stick to them. You ever have that guy, as nostalgic as it seems, old student comes walking through the door, right? Hey, how you doing? And you stop, and you're not teaching a class, by the way. You stop what you're doing, and you stand there and talk to him for 15, 20 minutes. Anybody? Right? That's not good time management, you guys. That's bad time management. But you can say politely, sir, you know, it's really good seeing you, and I wanna hang out, maybe we could do some dinner or some lunch, but right now I need to get back to work. And you share that and you just boom, and you set up another time where you can give them your full attention, and you can give them that type of, you know, what they need from the relationship. That's why they're there, because they wanna connect with you connect with you. So time management is crucial. Those ABC lists will help you facilitate that. Stick to them, do not deter from them verbatim. Do not, do not. Because if you do, you fall behind. How many of you always feel like you're trying to play catch up? Now, I like catch up on my burger, but I don't wanna play catch up. It's not, you can't grow that way. You can't grow your life, you can't grow your business. You can't achieve your goals if all you're doing is putting out fires 
playing catch up. Do you agree or disagree? You agree? Okay. The second one of that is money. Money, you guys. Manage your money. If I have a million dollars and I spend two million dollars, I'm a million dollars in debt. I make a hundred, I spend 50, who's the richer man? The guy with $50 in his pocket. So do pay yourself a livable wage. But what helped excel my business very quickly is every cent I made, I put back into my business. There was a point I hired an office manager that was making more money than me. I brought her in at $50,000 a year. I got $50,048. I brought her in and she was making more money than me. Somebody said, that's stupid, man. You're the owner of the business. She makes more money than you. And I reminded him gracefully, my ego would feed into that brilliantly. My ego, the smart, logical business mind. Well, now I have somebody to manage my business so I could do what I do better, which is teach. Which is teach. But I know. When I opened my school, I took the money, I cleaned the floors, I answered the phones, I taught the classes. 17-hour days for the longest time. I understand, but that's okay. I did what it was necessary to become successful. But the minute you see that light, take it. Hire that front desk person. Hire that other person, because you cannot do it alone. You do it as a team. You do it as a team. So when you, we talk about money management, be mindful of that. Be extremely mindful of that. And the minute I hired that great office manager, 850,000, went to a million 23, went to a million 67, and this year we're on a path to do a million 171, if we keep going the way we're going. And this is one little bitty school, 3,800 square feet. And we've lost 50 students. We had 600, we went down to 550. So what's happening? They find more value, the 550 are spending more money in my school, aren't they? Because I'm not getting more students, so where's that additional revenue coming from? They're finding the value, so they're spending more money in the school. And then the third one is wealth goals. You own your own business. You have the potential to create any type of life you want. Do you realize that? It's not like you go to work, right? You get that paycheck, you get the 401k, you get the annual raise, you get the six weeks vacation, you know, after a certain amount of time. You're not in that position. You own your own business. You have the ability to create any type of wealth you want. Are you absolutely, confidently sure about that? Raise your hand if you are. Then you need to establish your wealth goals, define them, and be extremely clear. Surround yourself with quality people. Here are some of the names. Master David Kovar, Kyoshi Kovar. He's one of my mentors. Surround yourself with quality people. My wife, a quality person. My 20-month-old son, my staff. You know what they did for me recently? This was so cool, I didn't know about. I walk into my house after a long day, and I would have stayed at the school another hour. I don't know how they got me out of there. And they had a professor appreciation party. For me, it was cool. It was the coolest thing. It was the coolest thing. You know, after 10 years, somebody said, hey, you're pretty cool. My staff said I was cool. You know, and that was nice. See, surround yourself with quality people. Some of the people, raise your hand if you work with me now. Who works with me now in, in what I do? Right? Do I give you my time? Do I grow your business? Do I give you the love? <laughs> right? Jerry Maguire, remember what he said at Cuba Gooding? Stop being a paycheck player. Stop being a paycheck player. Play from the heart, play from love, and I will show you the money. And same thing with the people I surround myself with. I don't hire somebody because, okay, uh, I'll do the service and you pay me X amount of dollars. No, if I invest in a relationship with you I feel is of quality, I can't put a dollar amount on that. There's no dollar amount I can put on it if that is of a quality relationship. Because the highs, the lows, the goods, the bads, this relationship is that valuable to me that I will see it through. I will find a way, whether it be compromise, whatever we need to do, you are of importance to me. But if you don't have that invested with somebody, forget it. So you need a financial mentor, you need a martial arts school mentor, you need, you know, some of you have a significant, significant other, some of you have kids, all that. Surround yourself with quality people. And going back to creating that positive mindset in step one, if you exude that positive attitude, will you naturally attract those people to you? You do. You do. People come into our school, 
20, 30 minutes early, parents and kids, and they're still there 30 minutes after their class. And we got a waiting area about this big, you know, 3,800 square feet, 550 students, but they hang out. <coughs> they do, why? For some reason, they're not sure. It's the only place they want to come to, and it's the last place they want to leave. And that's what you need to do in your school. In every element, from a clean bathroom, to a qualified staff, to your front desk, to everything. Everything in your school must be at that level. And does that happen alone, by yourself? Absolutely not. It's with the quality people you surround yourself with that you create that. We are in the greatest profession, the greatest practice in the world. We have the ability to change lives, we have the ability to make a true difference in our community. So create that positive mindset. Understand sustained passion. Make it happen. Make it happen. Be a student, never a master. Be content, but never satisfied. Create those wealth goals. Manage your time. Manage your time. Surround yourself with quality people, but above all, create that balance in your life so you function optimally, based upon focus and discipline. The reason you are in the martial arts is because you exude discipline and focus without question, without compromise. And if you do that, you create that type of balance that you deserve.